Welcome to Surfer 3.1, JSR 3.4.0. I'm Xing Wei Chen, the spec lead of Surfer 3.1. Surfer 3.1 is an update of Surfer 3.0. It's an industrial standard, and it will deliver the HTML dynamic scalable application. It increases the developer productivity and also meet the enterprise requirement. And today, we will take a look at the features added in the Surfer 3.1. There are four categories of features added in the Surfer 3.1. The first one is non-blocking I.O. The second one is upgrade requirement. And the third one is security enhancement. And finally, we will also have a miscellaneous category. Now, let's take a look on the non-blocking I.O. Traditionally, when you do the I.O., it's blocking. So if you're in a servlet, you try to read the data from the client side, it will be blocking until the data has been read. And this may not be desirable as you may want the server thread doing something else at the same time. In Server 3.1, we introduce the concept of the read-write listener and we will notify you when you can read the data or write the data. Now, let's try to take a look at the read listener. The read listener is an interface that consists of three API. On data available is involved when the data is actually come in. When all the data are consumed, they will call it on all data read. And if there is an error during this uh, reading operation, the on error will be called so that you will get a chance to clean up all, any resources. And similarly, for the writing, there is a write listener. And the write listener, when the, you are available to write, then they will call the on write possible. And if there is an error, they will call the on error. Now, besides the read listener and the write listener, we also add other methods to the server input stream and the output stream. In the server input stream, we add to helper method is finished, which indicate that your input is already read. And it's ready, it allows you to check whether the data is ready to read or not. In addition to this two helper method, we also have a method called set read listener. In this case, it will associate the given server input stream with the corresponding read listener. And in this case, a given server input stream we can only associate to one read listener. And similarly, for the server output stream, we also have a helper API that is, is ready, allow you to check whether you are ready to write data or not. And we can also associate a server output stream with a write listener. Now, for the non-blocking I.O., we will only support it in the asynchronized mode and the upgrade. And I will talk more about the upgrade in the second category of the features. Let's try to take a look on the examples. In this example, we have a test servlet, and the test servlet have a do post, and inside the do post, I decide to start async. So I have put a request dot start async there, and then I will try to do something, and then I will create a servlet input stream, and then I will create a read listener. And the next step is, I will try to associate this read listener with the corresponding server input stream. In this case, I will call the set read listener in the server input stream. It is simple to do the association. Let's try to take a look at what happened in the read listener itself. The read listener input is actually implement the read listener interface, which has three methods on data available, on all data read, and on error. You have a while loop inside, you try to consume the data, which is similar to all the classical way of reading the data. The only difference is, before you try to read the data, you have to call the input dot is ready first. You have to check whether the data is ready to read before you do the reading. Otherwise, it will be a blocking. On all data read and on error, you can see that, okay, I will try to call the async complete in this case. Because in this case, when there's an error, I would just try to finish the async operation. This is for the read listener. And if you want to look at a more complete example about the read-write listener at the same time, you can look at one of my blog that posted in the java.net. It's a non-blocking I.O. in Surface 3.1 by example. Let's try to take a look on the second category of the feature, namely upgrade. Upgrade is something that defined much earlier in HTTP 1.1. And the most famous example of the upgrade is the WebSocket. In the Server 3.1, we will try to provide a way so that you will start from the web container and then you can upgrade 
to a different protocol in a portable way. First, we will define a handler to handle the upgrade process. And we define an HTTP upgrade handler, and this interface only have two methods. One is an init, and we'll pass in a web connection as an argument, and this allow you to initialize the corresponding input stream, output stream, so that you can do the upgrade processing. And the second API is a destroy. And this will be called when the container try to clean up the HTTP upgrade handler. And it will also give you a chance try to clean up any resources that is need to be cleaned up. The next step is we will try to take a closer look of the argument in the init API, which is the web connection. The web connection is the auto-closable object. And it will provide two API. One is get input stream. The other one is get output stream. It allows you to get the corresponding input stream and the output stream so that you can do the appropriate I.O. operation. And in this case, if you get the input stream, you can actually register a read listener if you want. Having defined the upgrade handler and also defined the web connection, the next step is you try to associate this upgrade handler to the given HTTP server request. And we add an API in there, namely the upgrade. Notice that this upgrade API take the argument that is the class of HTTP upgrade handler. And this has the advantages of letting the container try to create a handler for you. So that in this case, the container can do the dependency injection if necessary, so that you can take advantages of the CDI. And as I mentioned before, you can also use a non-blocking I.O. inside the upgrade handler. Having defined this concept, let's try to take a look how it works. If an HTTP request has come in to the HTTP servlet, and the servlet look at the header and say, OK, I decide to do the upgrade, then they will create a HTTP upgrade handler. And then after they exit the service method and all the filters are unwind, the container will call the init method in the handler. Once the init handler init method is called, then you can actually start to communicate in a different protocol. And if the client connection is dropped or the server decides to close the connection, then the destroy method will be called on the handler. And in fact, we have implemented the WebSocket based on the upgrade mechanism here. Let's try to go to the third category of the feature, security enhancement. There is a security issue called section fixation attack. Basically, a hacker will send you an email. The email will contain a URL with the associated section ID. They let you to click on that URL and try to log in. At the same time, he will be able to access the section because he knows the section ID in advance. In this case, he can do whatever they want. Now, to solve this problem, different web containers solve it in by providing a way to change the corresponding section ID after the authentication. And they have to provide different proprietary API to do it. If they don't want to access the proprietary API, the way they do it is they invalidate the section, and then they create a new section, and then repopulate the data. In Server 3.1, we provide a new API to do it. In the HTTP server request, we add an API called change section ID. Not only do they allow you to change the section ID, they also provide a HTTP section ID listener, which listen to the section ID change event so that you can do other operation in the system if necessary. The second feature that we add in the security side is to define a role double star. This means any authenticated user. Basically, you can use this in the annotation uh, in the security constraint. And you can also use it as an argument in the is user in row call. Now, in this particular example, you can see that I define a surface security annotation, and then I put HTTP constraint there. I just say row allowed equal to double star. Then this means this server slash foo is going to be accessible only by any authenticated user. And you can find more detail in one of my blog that I post in the java.net. Row double stars server 3.1 in security constraint. The next security enhancement that we add is the deny uncover HTTP method. This element is only defined in the web.xml and is not available in the webfragment.xml. Let's try to take a look on an example. In this example, I have defined a security constraint, which is for the URL pattern slash star, 
and only for the HTTP method get and is for the manager role. What it means is for get any URL pattern, only the manager can access the get. Now the question is, if we only have this security constraint, what happened to the post put, head, or delete? It turns out that if you only have this security constraint without anything else, then you will only define a security constraint for the manager and all other URL will be accessible by anyone. And most probably, you don't want it to be like that. So in order to do this, you have to define another security constraint that is for any HTTP method other than GET. Now, in Server 3.1, we provide a convenience way to do it. You just need to put an element called deny uncover HTTP methods, and then it will deny access of all any undefined method automatically. And you can take a look on more details about this in one of my blog posts in the java.net. Besides these uh, three features, we also do a clarification in the run as. In the past, when you have a servlet and the run as is only take effect when you are inside the service method. But now, with the clarification, we also take effect in the init and the destroy. And this allows you to do the run as role so that you can create some object and then you can try to destroy some object. You can still have the privileges to do that. Finally, we come to the last category, miscellaneous. In Surflet, we also add a lot of miscellaneous features. The first one is we try to clarify the behavior of the server response we set and the set character encoding. In the past, if you try to set the character encoding, you try to get a writer, and then you try to reset, they will clean up all the header. And then now, if you try to set the character encoding again, it will not take effect. Because the specification say that if you already call the get writer, any set character encoding will not take effect. And we clarify this part in the spec so that now this will work. And the second feature that we add is in the same redirect. Now we will also support the network path references. That is also called relative protocol URL. And then we also add the generic in the server request wrapper, the is wrapper for method, and also the same for the respond, and also handle types in the value, you also return a class that is have a generic. And we also add several other API. For example, in the part, we have get submitted file name that is used in the multi-part. And also in the server context, we have an API to get the virtual server name. This allows the 196 op module to get the corresponding virtual server name so that you can write the port in a portable way. We also get at the get setter for the content name long in the request and respond object. As a summary, Server 3.1 provides a non-blocking I.O. upgrade mechanism and a security enhancement. It will increase the developer uh, productivity. Now you can write the non-blocking I.O. code easily and also provide a portable way to do the upgrade protocol and it's easier to write a secure applications. Now you can download Java EE7 SDK, which contains Surface 3.1, is available in the oracle.com Java EE.